At the end of another spectacular year in the life of Prince Nassim Hamed, it's time for Britain's most talked about young fighter to relax at Christmas with his fellow boxers. Opinions on Nassim vary, of course. Brash, flashy, arrogant, or charismatic, talented, and exciting. Certainly the private man is not the same as the public persona. Naz, as he's known to everyone in the sport, may be the big name in Brendan Ingalls Sheffield gym, but to them, he's just one of the lads. When he's not fighting, he's always there for the other boxers in the gym, like Ryan Rhodes and Johnny Nelson. As on this night, when both fighters leave for the arena, with Naz as a sort of unofficial cheerleader for the major fights they face that night. Backstage, he helps his lifelong friend, Ryan Rhodes, to prepare for the biggest night of his life. And at ringside, he's living every single punch. First, rooting for Nelson against the veteran Dennis Andres in a fight for the vacant British cruiserweight title. Johnny Nelson regains the British cruiserweight title. Next, it's Ryan Rhodes, who, like Nassim, has been knocking around the gym at Winkobank since he was not much more than a toddler. Silky Jones. Great shot that was from Ryan Rhodes. He's up at seven, but he's all over the place, Jones. He might not be able to go on here. It's stopped. Ryan Rhodes is the youngest British champion at any weight for 57 years. Two more belts for the remarkable Sheffield gym. But soon, Nassim gets big news about his own career. It's the announcement at a London hotel that Naz will face his acid test early in 1997. And as always, his mentor, Brendan Ingle, is there to get the news of a unification fight with Tom Johnson. The fight that I think a lot of people have been waiting for will happen, which will be the featherweight meeting between the WBO featherweight champion, Prince Nassim Hamid, and the IBF champion, Tom Johnson. This is the fight where some of you doubters are going to see whether this young man on my left's got it. So an exciting end to a year of highs and lows in the life of Prince Nassim. It all began with a broken hand. But soon he was breaking the spirits of opponents on his way back into the ring. Poor Saeed Lawal folded in 35 seconds. In summer, Naz went to prison, just for a charity gig, you understand. They carried him in to fight Daniel Alicia, and for a moment, we thought they might carry him out as well. But the Prince's answer to his first knockdown was to produce the knockout. There was talk of Naz fighting Irishman Wayne McCulloch. No excuse anymore, Wayne. It's done. It's Wayne's world. You've got your one million dollars. But the Prince was defying doctor's orders to fight ex-world champion Manuel Medina, and he nearly paid for it. But he showed real grit to win after a real scare. I'm not making no excuse whatsoever, but I have a very, very bad cold before the fight. Come judgment night, Naz was in the mood to make someone pay, and the prediction, well, it was the usual one. I told you, two runs. Two fingers. Can you see my eyes? Two fingers. It's going to be a great night. I'm looking forward to it. Come on! And the result? The resistance of an Argentine electrician called Remigio Molina ended in round two, just like the man said. I predicted the second minute of the second round, and whoa, what a prediction. But that's just scratching the surface. In this Christmas special, let's take you back 12 months. Naz had just won his world title. I'm just too good. I proved it on the night. I proved what I was going to say from the age of 11, uh, 18, when I first started as a professional. I was going to be world champion. Yes, Nassim started 1996 with the WBO featherweight crown. He'd won on a rainy night in Cardiff, silencing a hostile Welsh crowd with an emphatic victory over the local hero, Steve Robinson. Not even the rain could hit Nassim that night. 
but into every life a few drops must fall. And as 1996 was ushered in, there was an ominous injury, a broken hand. Training was restricted, and soon the press were told that the first fight of the new year was off. End of the day, I hurt my hand, I couldn't fight. So um, I've got to take it in that uh, respect that I couldn't box because of my hand, obviously. We wondered if Nassim's career might be threatened. Even the normally chirpy Frank Warren seemed worried. Three of the bones in the hand uh, have fused together and they need to be separated. So, uh, unfortunately, he's got the... Because he's a big puncher, I think he's in a position like Lloyd Hannigan's been in and other big punchers like John Conti, although I'm hoping it's not... And we don't believe it's as serious as that, but uh, he won't be boxing. They knocked me out uh, for an hour and anaesthetic and it's a keyhole surgery and basically looked all the way through the hand and says uh, further to come is going to be basically a, probably a quarter zone injection and um, I'll probably be fighting in a couple of months, you never know, uh, that hand's going to be knocking somebody out clean. It was Barry McGuigan who said what we were all thinking. That's a very worrying sign, and if you go into the gym too early and, and hurt that hand again, the injury can recur, recur, and recur. Meanwhile, the featherweight division was getting on with business. The long-reigning IBF champion, Tom Johnson, came over from America to Newcastle and promptly got dumped on the floor by Colombian Ava Bellanio. But Johnson is a class act, a master technician, and got up to win. There was already talk that he and the Prince would meet as they cavorted around the ring that night. But there was no deal just yet. I'm all running to try and pull him up so he can give me a fight. So I can take that idea off belt off him, you know? And after the fight, he says, yeah, I'll fight, yeah, I'll fight, yeah. And then you get a load of rubbishes in. Oh, I don't want to box yet, I don't want to box yet. But hopefully the fight is going to happen. I can't wait. March the 16th was a boxing D-Day either side of the Atlantic. Frank Bruno's world heavyweight title defense against Mike Tyson was sent to stage. And even Nassim had to take a supporting role. I'll be cheering you on. I know you can do it. While in Glasgow, the prince, his broken hand now mended, was strutting his stuff all over again on his way to a first title defense against one Saeed Lawal. stopped it then because when when Lawal got up he had nothing to offer his legs were gone I wondered if maybe Naz would back off and allow him to recover he decided not to one more punch exactly doing exactly as he pleases Naz congratulations I think we are you answered uh, one question we had how the right hand was I think the right hand's in pretty good shape the right hand's perfect as you see I don't tell lies when I make predictions I make to knock him out now he wasn't going to the second round but I would have loved to do it in the second round because I predicted it at the end of the day, it hit him so hard, the first shot, and it put him down, basically. So, what the hell with the second round, you know? It was going, so he had to go. Did you know it was a, a meaningful punch when you, when you threw it? I knew it hit him bang on. I timed it so precise. I told everybody, everybody in my changing was what I was going to do first round. And if it had hurt him, it had hurt him, and it did. It hit him with a beautiful, cracking timing shot. 
that's what a true professional is, a true world champion. So everybody out there who are listening, especially the fighters that want to fight for like sweet, seeing stupid people out in Britain, they'll get knocked out, Sparko. Once again, this precocious young champion had made it all look so ridiculously easy. It was as easy as I wanted to make it, basically. Um, I walked out there and I saw a shot, saw my opening, just uh, launched it straight off the launch pad and it just basically hit him bang on target, that split second timing, the accuracy, the power, just took his spark out. That's, I know definitely that probably I'm the strongest and the hardest puncher um, as a featherweight, so I'm going out there basically thinking in my mind, if I hit you, you're going to drop. Meanwhile, Big Frank, who talked a great fight in Vegas, suddenly seemed consumed by fear when faced with the reality of Mike Tyson. Again, Bruno, momentarily turns up with the claw by three, four, five punch combination. Right up against starting in. Bruno's in desperate trouble. It's going to be stopped. It's over. Bruno's lost his title. And I am Mike, his champion, all over again. For years, men like Bruno, Ben, and Eubank had been British boxing's top draw cards. Now this unofficial crown had passed to Prince Nassim Hamed, and of course he wasn't shy about accepting it. I'm making people happy, yeah. People are out there and people are banging it down. I want more people to get subscribe for Sky because if they're not, they're going to be watching. They're going to be watching other fighters, you know. And the main fighter to watch in my mind at the moment is obviously Prince Nassim because I mean I'm pres pres uh, producing the goods, and obviously I, in my mind I'm carrying the torch for Britain, you know. And as soon as I get to the states. I'll be, uh, I'll be flying the flag because I'm, I'm out there to, to beat a lot of fighters, you know, to win what I can win. This is a scenario only too familiar to Mike Tyson. But Prince Nassim Hamed goes to jail too, you know. Mind you, in his case, it is only as a visitor. Lindholm Prison in Yorkshire is home to some hard men. But every year, Brendan Ingalls' team of quick, elusive boxers go there and take on the inmates in a show for charity. I'm going to give you these, I'm going to knock you out 100%, you're all mine, the number two round, you're going down, see you later. You numb, chap! No, boy! We need to push you over the top. You can't put these muscles on your chin. <laughs> I know that. So, if you get banged on this chin, you know what's going to end up happening, don't you? <laughs> we are the ramps, we are the ramps, we are the ramps. The prisoners fancy their chances, though. Of course, the gag is they're especially effective on the inside. There's no rules. There's no rules, no regulations. You've just got to get out there and fight for your right. Worth remembering that nobody is paying Nassim thousands of pounds to appear here. He's doing it all for charity. Easy enough for a young millionaire to play the precious prima donna in these circumstances, but instead he joins in with some relish. The strutting, boastful showman you normally see on TV is not the real Prince Nassim Hamed, but it does, of course, sell tickets. No, the fellow does have a more thoughtful and gentle side. When people speak to me in public, they say, you're a bit quiet, aren't you? And stuff like that, you, you're really relaxed, aren't you? And you come really across different on television, you know? But end of the day, that's why I do come across differently on television. It's me, you know? It's, um, end of the day, it's, it's the buzz that I feel and how I've got to get across to the people on the other side watching the television. When the camera's on him, he's totally different to what he is when the camera's on him. It's, it's just a big show, really. It's to get the public's eye looking. Look at that, it's nice, look what he's saying and things like that. It's totally different, it's totally different, and um, I think in, other pe in people's eyes he's arrogant. The people that don't know him, that's the people that don't know him, he's arrogant, he's uh, this and that. But Naz is totally different when the cam camera's not on him, he's down to earth and 
chills out and does everything like other people do. Play snooker, goes to like Meadowall or things like that. He just does what normal people do. After everything what's happened, what I've earned, what I've accumulated, you know, no matter how much I win, my feet are firmly on the floor. But on this night, they're quite literally not on the floor. He loves the limelight, the fame, the adulation that comes his way. Some older fight fans might think all this is way over the top, but he feels that there's a show to be put on and the glitzy entrances are just part of the package. Please welcome one of boxing's young sensations. Here is the one and only and one of a kind. First time, Prince Nassim is being shown live on American TV, and the commentator they call the Colonel is in town. Well, Prince Nassim Hammond is making his debut on American television, which of course goes across the United States. He's going to be a big star. They don't know too much about him yet, but before this night is over, they'll know a lot about him. They'll love his antics. Nothing has been seen like this since Muhammad Ali back in the early 60s. They're going to love this kid, and I think he'll be a big star. Daniel Alicia was the challenger for Naz's second defense of the world title at the Newcastle Arena on the first day of Euro 96 in June. Alicia, a tough 23-year-old Puerto Rican who was unbeaten in 15 fights and 13 of those wins had come by knockout. But to most observers, it seemed that Alicia was stepping out of the paddling pool and into the ocean. Could he pose questions the prince hadn't yet been asked, like how would he cope under pressure in a tough fight? Naz, wearing a Newcastle United shirt for PR purposes, seemed blissfully unconcerned about it all. But then he always does, doesn't he? Remember this fight for the first time ever. Prince Nassim Hamed being shown live in the United States. The boxing fraternity there have heard all about him, but your average sports fan certainly hasn't. This is his chance to impress them and maybe get all the talk going about a big fight with the likes of a Barrera Second down, or a, a Zuma one. Nelson. But remember, last time out, he went in 35 seconds. Prince Nassim, the fourth fastest win in world title history against Saeed Lawal. What has Alisea got to offer? Good enough to be a world champion, junior champion as an amateur. Team is always looking to throw punches from unusual angles. There's been talk in the build-up to this of him throwing a secret punch that he's been working on. Two very good left hands from him there. Big factor in the fight is whether Alessia can take a shot. Anyone who fights Prince Nassim will need that quality if they're to beat him. Durability and resilience because he does hit by all accounts like a middleweight even though he's a featherweight. Alessia also needs to be able to react very quickly because the punches from Hamid took all sorts of angles very quickly. So Alessia has to be able to react. He has to read what Hamid is going to do. Remember even a battle-hard fighter like Steve Robinson, who had a several world title fights, could barely lay a glove on Prince Nassim. Alessia covering up very well, getting his arms up well to try and block those punches from whatever angle. A right hand gets through from Alessia. He did catch Nassim with one there. Good right over the top, though, from Nassim. Well, Alessia, keeping his hands up quite well, that's very important, the defence. Just as Nazim went to throw his left, he got caught on Alessia's right. Good fast right hand from Nassim. Alisea has taken the punch as well so far. Nassim is talking to him as usual. He's had some criticism from some sections of the media for trying to humiliate opponents in the past. Thin line between psychological warfare and tastelessness, of course. But Alisea looks full of ambition here and belief. Yes, and certainly he's... He's not psyched out in any way. Good right, right hand again. Oh, he's got him, he's got him down. Nassim is put down by a right hand. It was only a flash knockdown, but he'll have to take a mandatory eight count. 
down for the first time in his career. What about this in the first round? He wasn't so elusive there. Waving Alisea in. Well, this is the questions we want asked. What is Hamed like when he's getting hit? And he went down. So this is a very different fight now. We know that Alisea can, can get to him. Well, Alisea might have heard about the reputation, but he's taking no notice of it. What about that? Alisea puts Nassim Hamid down for the first time in his career. Flash knockdown, really. But how much has that dented Hamid's confidence? We thought this might be a tricky fight for him, and it shapes that way. And a good punch there, good long right hand. You see the hands are right down, catches it again, long spearing right hand to the chin. And again, just as he was getting away from that one, that one didn't seem to have the full power in it. But look at that one, that one did. He took that one quite well, Hamed, but there was more to come. When I did go down, I was coming out of a roll, and you can see it if you watch it on tape again. I was off balance, I was going backwards, and he just clipped me on the way back. Uh, it's simple to do, but at the end of the day, you've got to be able to do it, and he did it. Alisaia, who says he's looked at a lot of videos of Nassim Hamed, he spotted weaknesses, and he says tonight he will expose them. Has he already started to do that? Second round. Well, this is the most interesting Prince Nassim Hamed fight, well, I'd say, ever, already. And we've only had a round of it. Round two, Alisaia in these stripes. And this is where you wonder what's happening in Hamed, in his mind. Is this confidence starting to go? Can he keep the confidence up? Alisaios, rangy, long arms and again. Nassim is getting caught more tonight than I think I've seen him caught in probably ten fights. Got through with a right hand. But Alisaia is showing good resilience so far. Every time Nassim lands, he just takes the punch. He looks a real hard nut, doesn't he? He really does. He looks stronger. But Hamed come back well there with a couple of nice loose punches that really seem to land heavily on Alasia. The Prince is used to seeing fighters fall apart when he lands with his heavy artillery. But Alasia, so far anyway, hasn't done this. And... What's making this fascinating is that Prince Nassim Hamed is being asked questions that we haven't seen before. He's caught by a right uppercut, and that almost limbo dancer-style defense of his is being put to the test. But often the head movement like that, is, it's very difficult to get out of the way of all of the punches. He's got to try and get his hands of Hamed here. He's switching orthodox for a moment there, Hamed. Solid right hand there. Oh, left hook, and down goes Alisaia. There's the answer. And he's in a bad way on very unsteady legs. It was a left hook that did it in the second round. And Prince Nassim reasserts himself. He looked a very heavy right hand, then that little short left hook. He went down heavily there. Bad moments by Alisaia. Can his head clear? Can he get through this? This is a vital last 45 seconds, another right hand, has his legs splayed in the corner, needs to get the gloves up. The final bell for this round cannot come soon enough for Alisaia, who lands a very good left hook on his own. Under half a minute left in this round. Nassim looking to build on that breakthrough. Knocked down in both rounds so far. Have you right touched it? Left, and I don't think he'll get up from that. It's called up. The fight is over. The fight is over. There'll be no count. He's won it in round two. The ninth time he's won in round two. And that was Hamed's answer to suffering the first knockdown of his career. The finish really was chilling and frightening. And Alisaia is still down. And Prince Nassim Hamed retains his WBO featherweight championship against a young fighter who arrived with a lot of belief, who put him on the floor. But Hamid, give him credit, there was the answer. That's right, Alice, you asked Hamid them questions, the ones we've all wanted to know. Hamid answered them fantastically. 
very good power punching found the angles and really when he went down he went down very heavily really does carry some power in his fists Alisea managed to land more punches on Hamid certainly than Steve Robinson did on the whole of the eight rounds those two fought it was only two rounds but what an interesting two rounds they were they certainly were Alisea really came out to, to have a fight it wasn't overawed took the fight to Hamid hurt Hamid put him over and it looked as if Hamid may have a, a lot more in this fight than he was bar going to bargain for but Hamid answered the questions fantastically he came back beautiful punches and very heavy hands this is how it finished it was a two punch combination the best feeling about it is knowing that when my shots connect and I've gone bam and it's lights out you think all the training I've done you know everything's just just like a jigsaw To tell you the truth, I felt so good in there, but when he hit me with a good shot, I didn't even see the shot. But to tell you the truth, I got back up, know where my feet were, and when I plant my punches, see, I'm just too strong. When they, when they connected and I put my preciseness together, my, my accuracy, it just, it connected beautifully. And I hit him, I told you, when I hit him, they're going down from Allah. They're getting knocked out from Allah. Many people have said, out. many people have said they wanted to get you hit on the chin. What did it feel like when you went down for it the first good. time? It was beautiful. It was good. It was nice to taste, a nice good shot by a good, very, very good fighter, undefeated. But as you see my heart and my power and Allah behind me, I got up, I planted my punches, planted my feet. Allah Akbar, I just hit him so hard. He weren't getting up from that last shot, you saw it yourself. I'm never going to get beat, full stop. I, I refuse to lose. Allah will never make me lose. I will never lose. You see this nice belt? I'm never ever gonna lose, blatantly. I ain't losing nothing. Naz left as he'd entered, but even he felt the throne was going a bit too far. Never again, never again. That won't happen again. I wasn't comfortable with the situation. Um, it might have looked all right, and it might have been come down well for the American public, but end of the day, I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't myself coming out. I was myself in the ring. I make no excuses again. Brilliant fighter. Alicia, he done, done what he had to do and then he got knocked out clean. But, as I say, uh, I'll always come out the way I want to come out now, and that's come out dancing. But some people wondered if the knockdown meant the prince had a porcelain chin, but that ring of self-confidence remained undented. Um, it was brilliant. End of the day, um, I took two, three good shots, two good shots off him already. Um, the best shot, what he hit me with, was before I got put down. So... My head snapped back and I come straight back. So that was that show basically had a terrific chin and terrific legs all together by the shot that I took before. But it's hard to beat a fighter that is um, never, never negative in the sense of he was well hyped up for the fight and he came from Puerto Rico to fight to win that world title. He was undefeated and um, a world champion as an amateur. But, um, it, it was a feeling as if, you know, what am I doing here? This, this is not me. Let's get up and put him on out, as Muhammad Ali says when I watched him box Henry Cooper, you know. Out of the ring, it was a year in which Nassim's bank balance and celebrity status blossomed, starting with an award from a fictitious boxing star to a real one. <laughs> they love you, they love you. Smile. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. You've got something I know very special to announce exactly. so uh, over to you well uh, thank you very much thank you very much thank you <laughs> it's great to be back in the land of original boxing so it's quite a thrill anyway I was asked by Sky to present a special award the sports entertainer of the year and I've watched this young man fight several times and I love the way he entertains and I'm proud to announce the winner of the sports entertainer of 1995 is Prince Nassim Hamad. It was a year too when the media spotlight intensified on a young man who is still only 22.
The money can't ruin me. Totally down to earth. My job is to make sure that all the commercial and PR and marketing doesn't interfere at all with this journey. I like to train on my own, with my own crowd, and not in front of cameras all the time. Same photographer, same questions, but at the end of the day, uh, it's got to be done. It's what comes with a job. I put myself in the position and the media will ever come. It's my job to sort of make sure that everything is trying, is, well, is running smoothly. Um, got to look after all the commercial, all the financial um, stuff, and it's just making sure that everything sort of ticks, you know, and that there's no major hiccups and we sort of try and prevent things from going wrong if we do see them going wrong. Naz enjoys stardom, but don't the demands of it get a bit wearing for him sometimes? When you don't want it, and, it, and obviously you have to do it and everything, uh, it gets a little bit now and again hectic and you don't want to do it. But um, it's what comes with a job, you know, you've got to take it. Yet throughout his goldfish bowl existence, Nassim has never forgotten that the number one priority is boxing. I have got time because I make time end of the day, but I make time for training, you know. I train sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter to me when I train. If I feel like getting up and training at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, I'll train. As we move towards autumn, the story of Prince Nassim Mohammed's year was to switch to Dublin. For Nassim's Irish trainer and father figure, Brendan Eagle, it was something of a homecoming. Naz was fighting former world champion Manuel Medina, and of course they made sure the whole city knew about it. Naz may now be a young millionaire, but he remains loyal to the Sheffield team at the St. Thomas's Club gym. These are the people who moulded his talent, and he's never going to forget it. You've seen the gym. No matter what I've got, what, um, how much I earn, the gym is the gym. It's in Sheffield, it's in Winkerbank. I'm down there every day. That's where I train, that's where I'm based. I ain't changing nothing. Do you know what I mean? That's my winning formula, that's what I do. As I say, Brendan's been like a father from the age of seven. One thing I've always called him, no matter who comes up to me, waves anything under my nose, any carrot, whatever, you know, and says, come with us, do this, do that, let us manage it. End of the day, Brendan will always be there. He'll always be there to train me. He'll always be there beside me, you know. He'll always be in the corner. Naz is not everybody's cup of tea, and I'm not everybody's cup, cup of tea myself, but Naz, you cannot fault him. He come in here at seven and seven days a week, never miss. Travel all over the country with the amateurs and the pros. He put the time in, now he's reaping the rewards. He's put 15 year in here, hard slog. It hasn't been easy. Sheffield, of course, has had its share of sporting kudos. Wednesday in United, the world snooker at the Crucible Theatre, and Nassim is something of a fan of the city's basketball stars. Right now, the Prince himself is Sheffield's most famous sporting son, and they're proud to have him. He helped our profile, our sporting profile, uh, and he talks about Sheffield. He's an ambassador for Sheffield elsewhere. But of course, Sheffield are always pleased when people reach these sort of dizzy heights that he has. All Sheffield's behind me, so I've got to tell Sheffield, you got your Wednesday, you got your United, and you got the Prince. We're coming up, Sheffield's a big town, hitting it large. Now the fight with Medina draws near. It's the Dublin weigh-in. Nobody knew it then, but Nassim was battling with such a heavy cold that he was advised to withdraw, but refused. Medina was sure that he'd be hitting a winning note. Frank Warren was sparring with Wayne McCulloch, the Irish world champion who wants to fight the Prince. 
So we have no excuses anymore, Wayne. It's done. It's Wayne's world. You've got your one million dollars. Don't step back there. Relations be between fighters and promoters can be strained, but Naz couldn't be happier with Frank Warren. I want them four belts. And with the best promoter in the world, on my right, second father and shit. I reckon it definitely, definitely can be done. He's the man to make the matches, I'm the man to take them out. The guy's just a brilliant promoter and a brilliant man. We've got a relationship, like a father and son relationship, me and Frank. Uh, he puts on the fights, he's got the buzz about him, he's young, you know. He's not like the promoters that, that are out there, that are boring. He's the man, as soon as I went with him, and beautiful person, brilliant money. The feelings are obviously mutual. Frank Warren knows he has a gold mine with Nassim. We get on very well together, and uh, you know it's just developed. I mean, when I first met him, I just hit it off with him, and uh, we, you know, we just really, really get on well together. And uh, and uh, I get, you know, sort of a lot very worried when he fights, uh, more so than some of the other fighters, uh, because of that's the way our relationships develop. And you know, I do my best to look after him and ensure that everything is right for him, and uh, that I'll continue to do so. And, it, and it's a. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a privilege to promote him because he is a very respectful young man. I mean, if people knew him really well, they'd be sh really shocked to see what he's like. I mean, he's a very, very respectful young man, and, uh, you know, he's, a, he's great to work with. All of this is a remarkable story for the little boy from the Sheffield corner shop run by his dad, Sal, who, of course, is the biggest fan of all. My son is very good. Honest to God, we are proud of Nassim. Nassim very kind. We love Nassim. And it's easy to control Nassim. In fact, Nassim's success story really has become a family affair. It's a very, very close-knit family. And um, we all sort of like, you know, we're always around each other. And it's important that all the family's around, you know, well, not all of the family, but most of the family, because some of the family can't make it and things like that. But he knows that the family is there. And, um, you won't have it any other way. My family, I'm so happy about my family because at the end of the day, I'm making them so happy. I put them in a nice, beautiful, big house. They've got a nice, beautiful, big car. They can go on holiday anytime they want. They've got spending money. They've got whatever they want from me because at the end of the day, they've put me in this world and they've given me everything that I've wanted, you know. They've stuck behind me. We're a close, very close family and a very stable family. And as I say, my, up, my upbringing has been a lot to me and I've realised what my upbringing is done. You get a lot of people and a lot of fighters out there who are one single parents and stuff like that, you know? And they've only got just a mum or a dad or whatever. And it's hard for the kids growing up realising they haven't got a father or they haven't got a mother, you know? But there's only one man in the family who can take care of business on fight night, and that is Prince Nassim himself. He arrives early for work against Manuel Medina at the point in Dublin. The music of Oasis blasts out in the dressing room as Nassim prepares himself for the third defense of his world title. If he's tense, it isn't showing. And then the showman steps outside to meet his public. It would prove to be the most demanding night yet of his career. was put on the floor by Daniel Alicia in his last fight. Tall, rangy Medina, not known as a big puncher, but awkward and busy. He had proven world quality. He was a world champion as recently as last year. And a good right hand from Hamid, who's just beginning, you feel, to find his rhythm. It's taken him a bit of time. And that's often the way with him. And there's blood round the face of Medina. This is the round he predicted he'd win the left hand. Puts Medina down. Is he going to be able to get up from that? Yes, he does. Oh, he's all over the place. Very unsteady on his legs. It'll be a man at three eight count. There's only ten seconds left in the round. And the final bell can't come quick enough for Medina. Hamid looking to finish him off in round two. But I think the bell's going to come for the Mexican. 
Any second now, another right hand, another left hand, and Medina gets through. It was going to happen in that round, and I put him down, and he was absolutely gone. And what can I say? I was, I was there to take him out, and the bell, not just the bell saved him, the referee did him a lot of favours, and in my mind, that went well past 10 seconds. Scheduled to go 12 rounds, and Prince Nassim Hamad has only gone that route once against Vincenzo Valcastro when he won the European Championship. Well, that was 12 easy pace rounds as far as he was concerned. Caught by a big right counter that time was Hamed. And once again, you ask the question if that was a heavier puncher. And once again, he gets through with right hands. He's getting caught too much. His own timing is a bit awry, Hamed. And there are one or two little danger signals flashing here at the moment for him. I was having a fight in the ring. I was having a fight when the, when the bell rang. And then when the bell rang again to go to the corner, I was having another fight, my breathing, because I couldn't breathe properly. Oh, crunching right up again from Habib. Followed it with a left hand too. He's looking more impressive now. And this is better, but Medina coming back with a good right hand of his own. But he's beginning to set himself with these shots. Habib, now there was a... Right hand as well. He's making Medina miss almost arrogantly. Swaying out of the way. The Medina is cut. That isn't helping his cause any either. Good right hands from Medina. He's landing more and more. They're both prepared to trade now. Get off balance again. All oh, right hand knocks him. It's gum shield out. He smiles a rather silly smile at Medina. Been unsteady on his legs again. A little hard. Smile plays across the lips of Hamid as if to say, not in trouble, but there's a lull in the action and they will have to put the gum shield back in. Well, it didn't seem a good time to do it when Medina was in good control there. He'd rocked the head back of Hamid a couple of times and there's a few danger signals. It's the World Featherweight Championship as recognised by the World Boxing Organisation. Glenn has it even at the moment and a right hand from Hamid has Medina down. Medina nods to his corner, he says he's all right, he's got to get up though, before the count gets to 10, he just about made that, there can't have been a lot in it. Oh, he gets through with a shot of his own again, it rocked Hammett's head back on his shoulders, and the warnings Hammett's had about giving his gum shield, a hands low, sometimes counting against him, and again he found the right hand there, second time in the round that Medina's been down. And remember, the three knockdown rule is in effect. So one more knockdown in this round by Prince Nassim Hamid will give him this fight. And someone in Medina's corner was up trying to wave it over there, but he's, he's sat back down. Well, we said how durable Medina was. He's really living up to that. And Hamid, much the better work at the end of this round. Hamed, who describes his power as a God-given talent. Looking almost bemused that Medina is still in front of him. Well, another big round for Prince Nassim Hamed, and Manuel Medina's face at the moment is looking a bit of a mess. He seems to have it under control now, then. And it's over, in fact... The referee has called the fight off. The referee, Gino Rodriguez, says that Medina cannot go on. And Prince Nassim Hamed is still the WBO featherweight champion. I've boxed with a call. I've got the heart. It's got to them trenches where I've showed I've got the biggest heart. Uh, I carried on. I, over I have overcome the situation and beat him and beat him well. And it's not going to happen again. It won't happen again. How satisfying a night's work was that because it looked like your most demanding fight? Yeah, well, it's a very good fight for me because he's a very good opponent. You know, I proved myself at the end of the day. I mean, uh, I return in, I'll box Wayne McCulloch. They can shout as long as they want for him because I'm going to knock his spark out. You know? I'm going to do it, believe me. He's not like, he won't fight any fighters like this. You know? I'll fight him and I'll fight any of them. But all I'm saying is, end of the day, a W is a W. I'm a winner. Um, no excuses at all. Bad call before the fight, but I ain't got no excuses at the end of the day. Manuel Medina was a great, great fighter, two world titles, you know. I proved myself, 
he's a good fighter and I took him and I beat him. End of the day, I split his eye with a good, very, very good shot. Irishman Wayne McCulloch was still chasing a fight with Nassim. He did get one, though, with Frank Warren. In, in your own town, at the Wayne, you came to the Wayne. We didn't ask you to come, you come along to the Wayne. And in front of all these Irish journalists, all standing there, you said you wanted a million dollars, and I wrote it out on a piece of paper and gave it to you, didn't I? Did I do that? Whatever. Did I do that? Whatever. Did I do it? Are you saying I didn't do it? Whatever. I did it. And you now are reneging on it. I so if the fight don't go on, if the fight don't go on, you know why. I said yesterday that, um, told everybody you do. I says, give me the contract and I'll show it to my manager and my lawyer. I've... You said you want a million dollars and that's what no, you asked for. I, from all these I didn't mention any money. Yes, I'll, did. I'll fight Nazim at any, okay. any place anymore. I'm going to be the referee here. We'll call this off for the moment. It may be a story he'll that's resumed. He'll fight you in Ireland. He said he'll fight you in Ireland. In your backyard. The Americans were unimpressed with Nassim, but he felt the illness explained all. As soon as I stepped in the ring, as soon as after the second round, I started feeling it in the middle of the second round and feeling that I couldn't breathe properly. Uh, it's a ter terrible experience, but I've been through it and I've won in my mind. I boxed out masking, you know, I boxed very, very well. Uh, and what can I say? I mean, who, who nowadays, when they've got a cold or a big chest infection like I had on that night, gets out of their bed to go to work in the morning. They don't even get out of bed in, in the morning to go to work when they've got a cold, you know? They have time off. And I had to get in and box 11 rounds, hard rounds. That fight, actually, a lot of people come up to me and say you've built a lot more fans because of that fight and seen your heart, uh, they've seen the way you could box. When it comes to moments like that, when you can't breathe or whatever, they heard me in the interviews after the, after the fight in the press conference. I, the way I was speaking, everything, I was banged up really bad. That was the worst night that I've ever had as a cold. It came out of me that night. That was the night where it was just coming out of me, the cold. So it was the worst time it could have happened, you know. I got caught more in that fight than the whole of my career. But what can I say? I, t I had the experience. I took the shots. I never went down. Um, but I did well. I did, in, my, in my mind, I did so well that uh, they can never take anything away from me for that fight, you know. I was still able to put him down three times and hit him with good shots. And actually, if you looked at his face at the press conference at the end of the night, and you looked at my face, I mean, you'd know who's, who were in a fight or not. I mean, he had a serious face on him at the end of the night. But uh, full credit to Medina. Great former world champion, great fighter. Um, took some great shots, great stick. But um, he's very lucky he never caught me at my best because he would have been completely took out, and I mean out. There's no doubt that Nassim proved he had guts and grit against Medina, but no amount of cosmetics can disguise the fact that he was hit an awful lot. And you see the gun shield come out, look at that, as it landed. Now, if Azuma Nelson had landed that punch, or Marco Antonio Barrera, I'm not saying it would spell curtains for Nassim Hamed, but he would be in a lot, lot worse shape than fighting a light puncher like Manuel Medina. There are plenty of things for them to work on if he is to carry on in this uh, elite level in the world featherweight division. Azuma Nelson, the Ghanaian nicknamed the Professor, is just one big fight waiting for Naz. Nelson, an explosive puncher. At this stage of the year, the Mexican Marco Antonio Barrera was looking invincible. Would he fight Naz? And the American, Tom Johnson, IBF champ for three years, was also in the frame. The Prince felt ready for anyone. I want Tom Boom Boom Johnson. I want the WBC belt, Espinosa, Wilfredo Vasquez. I'm going to clean up, completely clean up. I'd love to box Wayne McCulloch and take him completely out. And that's when he's watching take the fight, because I can't wait to take him completely out. Azuma Nelson. Uh, I don't care what he's done in the past, at the end of the day, he's a fight, he's got two arms, two legs, he's got a, a nice chin that I can knock off. Um, the respects are paid for him, but once he's in that ring, totally goes out the window and I'm ready to take him out. The dream now is to become a legend. And to become a legend, I know fully well how to become a legend, you know. is to win numerous world titles of different weights and basically step up and beat everybody and retire undefeated. <laughs> Prince Nassim will be strutting his stuff.
I'll walk through fear. All the way to Judgment Night. You ain't seen nothing yet. Three world titles live on Sky Sports 2, including Prince Nassim against tough Argentinian champion Molina. Get ready for Judgment Night. Then, live from Las Vegas on Sky Box Office, the pay-per-view event, Judgment Night Part 2. Three world heavyweight titles on the line. Judgment Night is coming. Judgment Night, six world title fights in one night in Las Vegas and Manchester, where Prince Nassim would star alongside Nigel Benn and Steve Collins. Easy, baby, easy. Oh, gosh. Let him rest it. You got to try and box me? Yeah, boss. Oh, yeah. You haven't got the skills to be able to box me? Yeah. You got to try and box me this time, eh, pal? Oh, watch me. Oh, watch me. Easy, easy, easy. The Argentinian Remigio Molina was Nassim challenger. Unbeaten in 27 fights, an ex-electrician who seemed bemused by the hype. Not so the young champion who was determined to steal the show. I'm telling you, you realise, and with the atmosphere on that night, who is the top of the bill? Nah, I'm not taking anything away from Nigel Benn. I'm not taking anything away from Steve Collins. I think you're great fighters and they're best of luck, they're best man wins on that night. But what I'm getting across is I'm the top of the bill and I will prove so. I mean, I'll be on after Nigel and, and Steve Collins and I will perform in the way that I always do perform, in the best way that I can. And that will always be exciting. I will produce the goods, I will win, you know. Um, and what can I say? Uh, it will be me on after Nigel Benn and Steve Collins. And if Steve Collins and Nigel Benn are a little bit disappointed, what can I say? You, you look at the man at the moment, the man of the 90s, 96, I'm the licks, it's the prince. And Nigel and Steve, and, as I say, the respect is there, but you come in second. The recent scares had maybe been a wake-up call for Nassim. Now he was really into some hard training for Molina. One of the most important elements of Nassim Hamid's success is his camaraderie with the other fighters in the gym. I love it, you know, I love it. I mean, I grew up with the kids and never ever would you see me like, when they say you get to a certain stage, you'll be knocking heads with so-and-so or MP or any rubbish. Like, at the end of the day, I've got my friends. I know who my friends are, you know. Uh, they're down to earth. I'm down to earth. Uh, we're all on the same level. And you've got your Ryan Rhodes, hopefully he's going to be world champion, definitely. He's got the skill. Uh, you've got a, a wicked laughing Kevin Adamson, Johnny Nelson, Clifton Mitchell, Pelly, Jonathan Paxton. There's loads in the gym I can just pick out. I'll be there for you. Champion of the world. <laughs> he surrounds himself with his friends, with people that, that understand the game, that understand him, um, <clears throat> that, that understand the do's and the don'ts. You know, um, it's easy to, to, to buy a lot of friends, you know, but you find that you're real friends when things are, when times are hard. Another British champion, Ryan Rhodes, grew up with Naz in the gym. They're soulmates.
laugh. Yeah, we have a right laugh together. We're always together, we have a right laugh. Uh, whether it's his house playing pool or down by the wall or at the Swaller Hotel where we are now, we have a right laugh together. <laughs> They're just so funny, just make me crack up. So sometimes in training or in sparring, I can't, I can't really concentrate because they're just having such a laugh. We have such a, such a laugh in there. We don't, we don't mess about, you know. We just have a wicked laugh. While Nassim trained in the Sheffield gym, his opponent Remigio Molina was giving his first press conference. He couldn't speak English, and his interpreter said he hadn't even bothered to watch a video of Naz. No, he, he had the choice, but he made a choice not. Three days later, Naz brought along a video of himself for Molina to watch. But tell him not to pull out after you see it. Tell his man, after he sees the tape, not to pull out the fire. At the weigh-in, the prince looked trained to the minute. An uncomprehending Molina smiled through the taunts. I'm not broke up this way, sir. I've told you, two rounds. In the last two fights, you've had a couple of scares. You were on the floor in one. A lot of people criticised you last time out. Do you think you've got a statement to make, a point to prove this time? Yep, I've got a point to prove, as I always have compared to your critics. End of the day, I'm the best. I said I, I will always be the best, and I ain't going to get beat. I'm going to retire a legend. And I, again, you know what I'm talking about, Curly. Second, second minute of the second round, is that what you're saying? Second minute of the second round, and I don't want you to blink. Whatever happens, don't blink in the second round. We waited for the sparks to fly on Judgment Night Part 1 from the 9X Arena in Manchester. It holds over 20,000 fans, and it was close to a sellout on this night. Manchester United's Eric Cantona was among the big crowd who gathered expectantly that night. Not that he had to queue, of course. It's going to be a great night. Looking forward to it. Come on! So for the fourth time in 1996, Prince Nassim Hamed marched out in defence of his world championship. Molina tried to shut out the hoopla of Naz's ring entrance. There's no doubt that Nassim felt he had a point to prove to those who were beginning to doubt him. And this is what happened. Well, they say he's earning millions now in and out of the ring with uh, backing from a lot of blue chip companies. And of course, to keep all that going, he has to keep winning. This. Uh, Virtually unknown Argentinian, Remigio Molina in the blue trunks. And that's he looked as if he wanted to take him out with one punch. The way he let that right hand go. Last time, Nassi fighting with a heavy cold against Manuel Medina. Didn't look good that night, although he did show grit to get through. And prevail in the end. And he was the first man to stop Medina in seven years. Now, interesting to see how good this Molina is. Really, it's all about what the leader is going to make of Nazim because he throws punches from all sorts of angles and he throws them all with power. Nazim actually gave him a video of himself at a press conference this week. I don't know whether Molina actually bothered to watch it or not. glances at his corner there. Get the impression that Nassim Hamed has worked much longer, much harder, and the word from the gym, from the sparring partners, is that he's been looking electric, but can he do that in the ring as well? up with them punches he's trying to get all his weight into everyone bring them from all sorts of angles chance of Nassim around the arena the right hand from him there so far Molina has taken these punches okay I do say that his punch resistance is good it might need to be because the suspicion is now that Prince Nassim is the biggest punching featherweight out there though in the last couple of fights, I've noticed he's getting hit more than he did previously. Certainly in the last one. 
Yes, and the last one, he was, he was very much, he was loading up, looking for his own power, neglecting defences. He was made to pay once or twice in the last fight. It's the fourth defence of the championship for Prince Nassim tonight. Made to miss with those two. Looking right up the cut, didn't quite land flush. Good punch that one from the champion. You can already you, you start to feel that Ahmed is already getting his time. He's starting to land with decent punches. He just needs to, to get a little bit closer in. Last few seconds of the opening round. I'm thinking about going going out there, looking for my shots in the first round, planting them, you know, taking my time and then realising in the second round that it's time to do the business, because I just love that round number two. That round number two to me, just a nice round, and when you've got loads of number twos on your record, stopped in round two, knockout in round two, knockout in round two, it looks like this guy must be just a, like a does it wickedly every time in round two. You just must aim for round two every time, you know? And it, it just looks good on record. So Prince Nassim in the leopard skin trunks, the blue of Remigio Molina, who didn't really do very much at all in that opening round. But he took the punches okay. Very busy fighter. Now this is the round that Nassim said he would take Molina out in. He said the second minute of the second round. And he's won eight times before in this round. <laughs> Molina trying to calculate what's there in front of him. Nassim smiles at something, seemed to wink at somebody at ringside. that hasn't shown himself to be overawed this far. Not a knockdown, and now we are into the second minute of the second round. Let's just see. Look for the sharp counter. He's missing a lot, but the right hand got through. <laughs> Trying to step it up now. Fast punches, good ones, and he's got him going here. Terrific right hand. Molina took those punches extraordinarily well. How has he not gone down? Thunderous shots. And he shows some real resistance, but he can't afford to keep taking those. It looks good for the Prince at the moment, but what durability from the Argentinian. Because he's got a sturdy chin and a good character. He's trying to fight back, but you can't take powerful punches like that for long. He nearly made the prediction come true there. Molina hit by two more. At the moment, Nassim's doing what he wants. Right hand and a thunderous left. Molina, I don't think, is going to be able to carry on as he, he somehow got to his feet. His eyes were in orbit. He looked to us at ringside. His powers of recovery, remarkable. Three quarters of a minute left in the round. And Nassim Hamed wants to get the job done in the round that he predicted. Well, Molina's brave, but his feet, his legs just don't look quite there. Unsteady legs, and you just think it's a matter of time now. It is over. It is stopped in the second round. He said round two. It is round two. Molina's protesting, but he's stopped on his feet. There were some huge punches again. And that was French Nassim Hamed back to his sharpest best. Well, Molina may question the timing of the stoppage, but there was no doubt at all, even if that had gone on, what was going to happen. It was, it was, it was going to happen. He showed good courage. He showed a sturdy chin. I think a lot of people would have been out there for Molina trying to fight back. But really, he was at his best, Hamed. Some very good punching and some very good power. Now, let's have a look at these punches again, Glenn. Yes, he just works. And look at the power. He, he leans to the right, throws that 
the right lead into an uppercut position. He goes down heavily from the left. Excellent punches. He relies on that a lot. Ahmed, he gets great success when he turns them punches into uppercuts. You can ask questions about Prince Nassim Hamed, maybe based on the Manuel Medina fight, but one thing you cannot question is his power. He is the biggest punching featherweight out there. I'm convinced of that. He could knock out anybody. You said round two. It was round two. Yeah, but was it in the second minute of round two the way I predicted? No, it wasn't. It was in the last minute of round two, but we're not going to argue about that, are we? Are you sure? Well, well, it was a brilliant performance by myself, you know. Tonight, I proved, I proved that no chest infection, no cold, no excuses. Business was done, as usual. There were some thunderous punches there. The crowd <laughs> here at the Ninex Arena are loving that. They, they enjoyed the performance. Were you surprised he actually stayed up from that first barrage of punches you put in? Well, he did really well, you know, because he, he actually caught me uh, with some good shots. He, he came to fight. I could see it in his eyes. But when I knew, I knew, comes the second round, and I was letting them rocket launchers go. I knew he was going to be out of there, and I predicted the second minute of the second round. And whoa, what a prediction. I'd like to thank everybody in Manchester and everybody around Britain who has come to support me. Woo! I'd like to thank the fans, the fans out there, and uh, the guys out there what's uh, supporting me and sticking by me all the way, because you're looking a legend soon to be. I'm telling you, I ain't letting you down. For Britain and for the Arab world, don't worry about anything. Later that night in Manchester, the scene switched to a posh restaurant where the fight crowd had gathered to watch Judgment Night Part 2. Naz was there as the astonishing events unfolded in Las Vegas. Evander Holyfield stunning the world and Mike Tyson. It was a shock of seismic proportions. All over in the 11th round, and I have to tell you, that is the biggest upset in the fight game, bar none. Holyfield, one of the greats, which prompted a question and surprising answer from Naz. Tell me, where do you think you've got to in your quest for greatness and to be a legend now? How near? I'm, I'm nowhere near yet. Don't, well, don't worry about it. End of the day, I want to win five world titles. That's quite an admission from you. You're nowhere near. I'm nowhere near yet. <laughs> Not what I want from, my, from the bottom of my heart. I want five world titles in different ways, different organisations, you know, unifying, not ever, not ever getting beat. That's when you can call yourself a legend. I've got a lot to prove. Frank Warren was there too, and he felt that Naz would one day be as big as Holyfield. He's a good father. Don't you worry about it. I know a good father when I spot them. Nassim Hamid is a good father, and he will go on to unify titles, I can assure you. But one possible fight for the Prince went out of the window when Marco Antonio Barrera was sensationally beaten by New Yorker Junior Jones. Hard right hand by Junior. He's surprised. More time than he deserved, but it's going to be over. The bell ends the round. Barrera is knocked down. The referee stopped the fight. Has the referee stopped the fight? Give so Naz was matched with the IBF champion Tom Boom Boom Johnson. Boom Boom, you are going to get boomed out. You're going to get knocked out. And I've changed his name from Boom Boom to Pum Pum. And then we're <laughs> out there who really understand that they know what I'm talking about. At a smart London hotel opposite Hyde Park, Frank Warren made the official announcement just in time for Christmas. The fight that I think a lot of people have been waiting for will happen, which will be the featherweight meeting between the WBO featherweight champion, Prince Nassim Hamid, and the IBF champion, Tom Johnson. This is the fight where some of you doubters are going to see whether this young man on my left's got it. Also on that bill, Steve Collins and Robin Reed, and the hype's already started. I'm, I'm beating him. That's, that's, that's a fact. You know, it ain't, it ain't uh, just something to say. I admire the confidence. You know, it, it, that's a fact. I love confidence, you and know. I love people coming over here you know. to my country with the confidence. It's not about your country, it's not about coming to your country. It's about doing what I do best. You know, if you're I'm a truck. Don't be starting now. You know, you're gonna be alright in there. If you're a good kid, I, I, I'm for real. If you're a good I'm kid, I'm for real. After we knock you out, I'm gonna shock up the world now. We'll let you come to the United well, States. Well, I can't hear anything Guinea said. Don't ever understand. I ain't underestimating you. Don't ever understand. I do believe on 8th of February, I will knock you out. I believe you will too. All right, in the I ring I'm talking be. about, I'm knocking you out. I believe you will. That's be. what I believe. As long as you believe that, and I believe that, then we ain't got no problem. We ain't got no problem. You just told, you just told 
You just told the press now that you do believe that too. I think you said the 8th of February, year 2000. I do believe it. Is that what you said? What did you say? <laughs> just smile. The press conference ended in a draw, but what about this fascinating fight? Boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna shoot your head down. Let all your feet. Oh, of course, I'm pressing it. In my house. Boom, 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 boom. Mm. Say what you like about Nassim, he always has time for his fans, of which there are quite a few. See you guys later. Right. Don't forget I said, the 8th of February, back up your man. Because yeah, the boy's coming from America and he's going to get knocked That's out. Definitely, man. There's great fans out there that have got that wicked card, you know. And sending their letters in and saying, basically, you've done great for me, you know, I'm doing brilliant at school, I've got that positive mental thinking, you know, and it's brilliant. You think to yourself, great, as long as the kids, you're showing them good stuff instead of bad, you know, I can, no bad examples out there, you know, I can hold my head up high and I'm involved in the Teenage Cancer Trust, you know, I'm out there to help, I'm out there to help and show people that I'm a genuine man. From there, it was on to a posh door to buy a few Christmas presents. And this is a fellow who can afford them. According to one magazine, he earned four million pounds this year. Another report suggested 10 million. One thing's for sure, his friends can expect rather more than a chocolate selection box this year. Okay, up that's gonna go with this. Even in London society, Naz is now an instantly recognizable face. You really are. What a I'm so gonna have that. There you go. Can I tell you, I sat next to Richard Gere the other night and he refused to sign an autograph. Richard Gere? He is a miserable watch. Well, there you go, there you go. When you meet the prince, you get treated in the right Thank way. Thank you so much. Very You're more than welcome. welcome. Thank you very much. Bye. Yes, he may be rich, but he's not remote. The money can't ruin me. Totally down to earth. In five years' time, ten years' time, you spe you'll be speaking to the same man in the exact same way. I'm not going to change. And Brendan's always going to be the trainer. I'll always be with Brendan. Whether you love him or you hate him, you can't ignore him. He's something special. Enjoy him while he's there and while he's here. Because, you know, they only come along once every hundred or two hundred years. I love him. I just think he's, he's such fun to be around. I mean, you know, you guys are all buzzing when, he's, when we're having a press conference. The press... You know, as much as they say they don't, some of them don't like him, a lot of guys do like him, but there's always something to write about. You know, he is a promoter's dream. You know, he's a young Muhammad Ali as far as promoting the fight's concerned. He says all the right things, does all the right things. Um, he's a dream to work with. The Prince told us he'd be rich and famous. In 1997, he aims to prove he'll be one of the greats. I'm so hungry, still hungry. Success, the money, the fame, any of it, never ever has it got too much. And at the end of the day, I will always rise to the occasion, I will always produce the goods and just bring it straight back to you, straight back to Sheffield and make the whole of Britain proud, whole of England proud and the whole of the Arab world proud. There's a difference between losing fiction. Now you're close.